Malaysia expresses concerns on Myanmar's state of affairs. No deaths linked to COVID-19 vaccine jab. Good afternoon. Thank you for watching. You're watching Updates at Noon with me. I'm Jessica Lee. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob expressed concerns over the current situation in Myanmar. He also expressed hope that the country will return to its state of democracy as soon as possible. We are also hopeful that the current situation will not escalate further. This will have an adverse impact on the repatriation of this place from India to Myanmar. Based on humanitarian grounds, Malaysia continues to render assistance and protection to the Rohingya in Malaysia. He added that Malaysia remains committed to a supporting efforts of the ASEAN Special Ambassador in finding a peaceful solution for the country. Speaking at the closing of the 13th Asia-Europe Summit meeting, or ASEM, the Premier also reiterated Malaysia's stance in helping ASEM manage issues pertaining to regional and international affairs. Malaysia is currently focusing on neighbouring countries before expanding the vaccinated travel lane or VTL to other countries. Foreign Minister Datuk Saifuddin Abdullah said the emergence of several COVID-19 variants in some countries has caused Malaysia to consider enhancing its border security and COVID-19 curb measures. Ya, kita fokus kepada jiran-jiran kita sambil uh, yang bawah mat kari telah pun membuat pengumuman yang sangat penting tadi berkaitan dengan penemuan varian baru dan uh, kita telah pun menasihatkan uh, malah wakil kita di negara-negara yang berkaitan uh, untuk mengambil tindakan yang sewajarnya. The health ministry revealed that no death cases or have or case have been reported to be directly linked with COVID-19 vaccine jab. Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin this said this was confirmed by the COVID-19 uh, vaccine special pharmacovigilance committee, the special financial assistance steering committee for COVID-19 vaccine exigencies, and a medical technical committee. Apa-apa kes pun kita akan buat uh, siasatan yang terperinci iaitu forensik, siasatan post-mortem yang, uh, yang teliti sebelum satu uh, ketetapan dapat dibuat. Jadi buat masa ini kita masih lagi berpendirian bahawa buat masa ini ya, tidak ada kematian yang disebabkan secara langsung daripada vaksin dalam pandangan pertimbangan Pakar yang menasihati CITF, mereka kata uh, faedah ataupun benefit daripada menerima dos penggalak jauh lebih besar daripada risiko. The health minister also said that eight applications for reparation scheme for those with serious side effects after receiving COVID-19 vaccine jab have been approved. However, he said all approved applications does not involve cases of death. According to Kyrie, as of now, the health ministry is still considering 93 other applications. Dalam proses pembayaran oleh pihak agensi pengurusan bencana negara NADMA melibatkan jumlah RM132,500. Tidak ada kes kematian. Hanya ada kes yang perlu dirawat di hospital. 8 kes, saya nak sebut konteks, 8 kes daripada 52.5 juta dos administered to date. Yeah? 52.5 million cases, doses of vaccine administered, eight cases where we have agreed to pay out. Sebanyak 78 permohonan lagi dalam penilaian 
Daripada jumlah ini 56 permohonan dalam penilaian jawatan kuasa pharmacovigilance manakala 22 permohonan dalam penilaian jawatan kuasa teknikal. 7 permohonan 7 lagi permohonan telah ditolak. The Ministry of Communications and Multimedia or KKMM will hold the Rio Keluarga Malaysia program starting January next year in an effort to promote and elevate the local creative industry. KKMM Deputy Minister Datuk Zahidi Zainul Abidin said that the program, which also aimed to revive the economy and boost the tourism sector, would be held in all states in stages. He added that the Rio Keluarga Malaysia would be implemented through a collaboration between KKMM, My Creative Ventures in Drembarhad and the Cultural Economy Development Agency or Chindana. According to Datuk Zahidi, this program will create 5,000 job opportunities as KKMM plan to initiate arts, cultural shows, sales and other activities to boost the creative industry. The art exhibition was held in conjunction with the Art in the City or AITC 2021, an annual event organised by Chindana to revive arts and culture in Kuala Lumpur. Malaysia Airlines has received approval from the Sarawak Disaster Management Committee or SDMC to operate additional flights to Sarawak for the period of 11th of December to the 5th of January. Now the airline said that for the Kuala Lumpur Kuching route, the frequency of flights will be increased from 21 to 35 weekly, while for the Kuala Lumpur Bintulu route, Kuala Lumpur Miri route and Kuala Lumpur Sibu route, the weekly flight frequencies will be increased from 7 to 14. In a statement, it said as airlines execute dynamic pricing based on supply and demand, fares may vary depending on the date, time and remaining seats available. It added that Malaysia Airlines will continue to adjust the capacity or frequencies as advised by SDMC and customers are encouraged to book their flight tickets early to be able to obtain a lower fare. It also said that since 1st of November, Malaysia Airlines has been operating a limited service of 21 flights weekly to Kuching, as approved by the SDMC, compared with 63 flights weekly in December 2019 prior to COVID-19. It said that on the week of 22nd of November, bookings achieved a load factor of between 98% and 100% in view of the upcoming holiday season. It also stated for the December travel period, Malaysia Airlines filed an average fare of 350 ringgit from Kuala Lumpur to Kuching, one way beginning October 2021. A total of 596 summonses were issued to vehicle owners for various offences in an integrated operation involving various enforcement agencies dubbed Op Sepadu. The operation was conducted at Sungai Besito Plaza at 11pm last night. Kita juga mengenal pasti pengguna jalan raya yang terlibat dalam dalam penyalahgunaan dadah. Kita ada AADK juga pada malam ini. Kita juga menjalankan penguatkuasaan bagi peraturan kualiti alam sekeliling, bunyi bising kenderaan motor dan juga peraturan-peraturan kualiti alam sekeliling, kawalan pelepasan daripada motosikal 2003 daripada Jabatan Alam Sekitar. Kita ada tim daripada Jabatan Alam Sekitar bersama-sama dengan kita. Dan lain-lain kesalahan ataupun perkara-perkara yang melibatkan kenderaan dan juga kesalahan-kesalahan melibatkan pengguna jalan raya yang kita ambil tindakan di bawah atas pengangkutan jalan 1987. One month of salary aid for Selangor civil servants. That and more coming up after this short break. To be certain on whether certain information are true or false, follow these tips. Accuracy. Is the news source a credible person or research? Authority. Identify the author of the news and ensure that they are experts in the field or whatever is being written about. Currency. Check the publication date. It may be an old article that was resurfaced for publicity and traction. Coverage. If the news is too short and not specific, it is advisable that you ignore it. 
objective, evaluate the possible purposes of a publication if it serves no benefit or instead damaging and may result in chaos, it is better to avoid sharing. Tidak pasti, jangan kongsi. Welcome back. The Selangor government table a 2.34 billion ringgit state budget for 2022, of which an allocation of 1.22 billion ringgit or 52% is for administrative expenses, while the remaining 1.12 billion ringgit is for development expenditure. Selangor Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Amiruddin Shari said there would be a budget deficit of 293 million ringgit based on the state's projected revenue of 2.05 billion ringgit and total estimated expenditure of 2.34 billion ringgit. Datuk Sri Amiruddin explained that Selangor Budget 2022 comprised five core areas, driving high-impact economic growth and increasing delivery efficiency, developing a caring society and social well-being, strengthening Selangor's public health agenda, ensuring a green environment and sustainable development, and optimizing smart technology and digitalization. He said of the 1.22 billion administrative expenses, 446.73 million ringgit was for emoluments, 530.81 million for services and supplies, 11.79 million ringgit for asset purchases, 191.14 million ringgit for grants and fixed payments, and 39.53 million for miscellaneous expenses. As for the proposed development expenditure, he said 351.78 million ringgit was for infrastructure development, 301.57 million ringgit for social development, and 292.28 million ringgit for economic development. Other than that, Datuk Sri Amiruddin also announced special financial assistance to the state civil servants of one month's salary or a minimum of 1,000 ringgit to be paid on the 29th of December. The second special assistance was announced with the financial implication of 37.5 million ringgit. He explained that this is to appreciate the tireless efforts and commitment of civil servants to ensure that service delivery remains efficient and effective. Datuk Sri Amiruddin also announced that the allocation for opposition Assemblyman will be increased to 400,000 ringgit for the next year compared with 150,000 ringgit currently. Meanwhile, the Negeri Sembilan government tabled the state's budget 2022, which is a deficit budget of 88 million ringgit. On the budget themed empowering the right economy, Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Aminuddin Harun said the strong reserve position of 899 million ringgit enabled the state government to allocate 520 million ringgit, which exceeded the expected revenue of 432 million ringgit and included various financial assistance, cash grants, and non financial incentives as well as support aids. Meneruskan agenda pemulihan ekonomi adalah perlu bagi sebuah kerajaan negeri untuk berbelanja lebih daripada kutipan hasil bagi membolehkan lebih banyak intervensi dan suntikan dana awam dilakukan sekaligus membantu kenaikan KDNK negeri seperti yang telah saya terangkan di awal tadi. Namun, belanjawan defisit ini perlulah bersifat terarah dengan memberikan keutamaan kepada sektor-sektor yang memberi nilai pengganda tinggi kepada ekonomi. Speaking when presenting Negeri Sembilan Budget 2022 at the second sitting budget of the fourth term of the 14th State Assembly yesterday, Datuk Sri Aminuddin said Negeri Sembilan Budget 2022, which is drafted in a comprehensive and inclusive manner, prioritizes the post-COVID-19 economic recovery agenda with the entire focus given to initiatives that can boost the state's economy. in sport, Southern Tigers ready for KL City in Malaysia Cup Final. Defending champions Johor Darul Takzim or JDT have booked their place in the finals of the Centennial Malaysia Cup after defeating Trungano FC or TFC 4-1 on aggregate. 
in the semi-finals. The Southern Tigers came out roaring at the Sultan Ibrahim Stadium in Iskandar Putri last night, scoring three goals in the first 15 minutes of the match. Benjamin Smora's side opened a score through a long-range shot from Brazilian striker Bergson da Silva in the sixth minute before Argentinian import Gonzalo Cabrera doubled the lead four minutes later. The JDT continued their onslaught against Nafuzi Zane's men and Bergson found himself on the score sheet once again through a powerful shot from close range in the 14th minute. The home side's gung-ho play came to a halt as midfielder Safik Rahim was shown the red card for a foul and hit-butting incident two minutes later. However, TFC could not capitalise on the advantage, with the score remaining 3-0 till the end. Meanwhile, Kuala Lumpur City FC will take on JDT in the 2021 Malaysia Cup final after emerging victorious over Malacca United at Hang Jebat Stadium, Krubong, Malacca last night. The winner was decided through a penalty shootout after the match ended in yet another one-all draw, which Malacca won 5-3 after the aggregate score was tied at 2-all. The City Boys went ahead in the ninth minute when Jay Partiban tucked in the ball after an attempt by Muhammad Akram Mahinan, but Malaka managed to equalise through Ahmad Shamin Yahya in the 65th minute. In the penalty shootout, Paolo Josui, Romel Morales, Indra Putra Mahayudin, Hadin Azman and Giancarlo Galifuco all converted their penalties for KL City, while Adriano Narzisco, Manuel Ott and Sony Norde scored theirs. But Giovanni Gomez's attempt hit the post to allow Boyan Hodak's men into the final. And the 2021 Malaysia Cup final scheduled to take place at 9pm Tuesday at Bukit Jalil National Stadium. JDT will take on three-time champions Kuala Lumpur KL City FC, who will make their first appearance after 32 years. Meanwhile, the Malaysian Football League MFL said in a statement that out of 20,000 tickets for the final, each of the finalists will be allocated 9,000 tickets to be sold through Ticket Hotline, while the remaining tickets will be MFL's commitments to sponsors. In squash news, current national squash sensation Aifa Azman once again shown with a stunning win over fifth-seeded Canadian Daniel Letourneau in the 2021 Malaysia Open. Aifa Daniel Letourneau 11-4, 11-7, 5-11, 11-3 11, over the course of 32 minutes to book her spot in the finals. World number 69, Aifa, was careful to respect her 19th world ranking opponent, meticulously studying the movements and strikes to set up her own counter attacks. The 19 year old coolly read her opponent and struck back to take control of the first two sets. Latonia, however, pegged her back by taking the third set, but Aifa was unfazed as she refocused and came back firing in the fourth to seal the win and dash the Canadians' hopes of a comeback. The Kadahan next faces yet another high hurdle as she will take on world number eight, Salma Hani of Egypt, for the title tomorrow. The Hani is one of the favourites to emerge victor of the tournament, who previously powered through with an 11-1, 11-8, 11-5 win over fourth seed Holly Norton of Canada. Meanwhile, in the men's draw, reigning national champion Ng Yan Yao fell short as he crashed out in his quest to the final. Yan Yao was defeated by top seed Miguel Rodriguez of Colombia with a score of 11-9, 11-9 and 11-6. The result also means that Yan Yao was unsuccessful in retaining the title which he won in 2019. Now, faced with another favourite in winning the tournament, Yan Yao put up a good fight but luck was not on his side as he suffered a narrow defeat in the first two sets, 11-9, 11 -9. Nine. Nevertheless, he remained consistent in the third set but was unable to pull through and he lost the set 11-6 to the world number 12. The result all but ensures that Malaysia will have one representative in the finals tomorrow via Aifa Asman. 
And that concludes updates at noon. Making the headlines today, Malaysia expresses concerns on Myanmar's state of affairs. Tune into News at 10 coming up at 10 p.m. on Saluran Brita RTM on My Free Views Channel 123. You can also stream the news by surfing RTM Click. We leave you with visuals of Christmas lights in Malaga, Madrid and Barcelona to mark the start of the festive season in Spain. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Jessica Lee. See you later.